In November 2010, a team of researchers from around the world gathered in Punta Arenas in southern Chile. They wanted to investigate rumors that voracious king crabs were scaling the Antarctic continental slope and would soon invade the shelf, home to some of the most unusual marine communities on Earth. Because of flow patterns created by the Antarctic circumpolar current, the water over the Antarctic continental shelf is colder than deeper waters. This cold water has until now kept the king crabs from climbing onto the Antarctic shelf. But now sea temperatures are rising fast and there is a clear and a present danger that king crabs will move up to the Antarctic shelf. If they reach the shelf, they could destroy the unique and defenseless seafloor communities of sponges, anemones, sea stars, giant ribbon worms, and sea spiders, radically changing the marine ecology of Antarctica. The team's base of operations was the research vessel Nathaniel B. Palmer, an icebreaker provided by the United States Antarctic Program. The plan was for the Palmer to take the team from Punta Arenas across the Drake Passage to Marguerite Bay along the western coast of the Antarctic Peninsula. Marguerite Bay is a likely site of an initial king crab invasion because it is near the northernmost extent of Antarctica, close to king crab populations in South America. Team members from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution brought sea sled, a rugged underwater camera vehicle that could be lowered from the Palmer and towed slowly over the sea bottom to take photographs of the invading king crabs. Sea sled had to be towed about two meters or six feet above the ocean bottom. But even if sea sled could be kept at that level 100% of the time, it could still only photograph a two and a half meter wide strip of the bottom. The chance of photographing a king crab or two would be like finding a needle in a haystack. The Palmer left Punta Arenas on a beautiful Friday evening, the day after Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, the good weather did not hold, and the Palmer had to plow through six-meter swells. Rough seas would have made it impossible to keep sea sled close enough to take photographs without hitting bottom and smashing the cameras. The seas eventually calmed, and although it was still snowing, the swells were down to a manageable two meters. Team leader Sven Tatia's strategy was to tow sea sled across the continental slope and shelf in a zigzag pattern of transects, the first transect going straight down the slope, the second going back up and diagonally across, and the third going straight back down. Each transect was to be 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles long. This search pattern provided the best chance of locating king crabs. The Palmer reached the beginning of the first transect on Wednesday, December 1st. With the help of the Palmer's crew, the team hooked sea sled to the ship's winch and the A-frame and launched the vehicle on its first dive. During the dive, Sea Sled sent images and navigational data up the cable to computer screens to the surface. As Sea Sled was being lowered to the bottom, the team anxiously awaited the first images to appear. Finally, after 15 minutes, the screens lit up with images of the sea floor. The first pictures from the top of Marguerite Bay shelf showed a gray, gravelly sand bottom scattered with brittle stars, sea urchins, sea anemones, and the occasional fish. There were no signs of king crabs. Outside, a group of curious penguins visited the Palmer. Sea sled reached the end of the shelf and began its journey down the slope. If any king crabs had begun to scale the slope, they would have been found here. The team kept their eyes glued to the computer screens as Sea Sled moved down the slope. The brittle stars started to dwindle. Then, after almost four hours, it happened. There, smack in the middle of the computer screens, was the unmistakable bright red image of a king crab, shot at a depth of 1,100 meters or 3,650 feet. There was no longer any doubt. King crabs were on the deeper parts of the slope and were likely making their way upslope towards the Marguerite Bay shelf. At least this one was. Were there more? The answer came quickly. 
Less than a minute later, a second king crab appeared on the screens. A few minutes later, there was a third. By the time the sea sled had reached the end of the first transect, in the early morning hours of December 2nd, the team had spotted over a dozen king crabs. Sea sled had now been underwater for over six hours. Rather than waste time bringing it to the surface, the team decided to keep it on the bottom and continue straight onto the second and third transects. The second transect produced fewer king crab pictures than the first. Still, the team spotted another 10 of them. Things changed dramatically on the third transect. The team spotted nearly twice as many king crabs as they saw in the first two transects combined. They still found no king crabs on the upper half of the slope or on the Antarctic shelf. After almost 20 hours in the water, Sea Sled was lifted back on board the Palmer in the evening of December 2nd. The 50-plus king crabs Sea Sled had photographed along that very thin strip of sea bottom far exceeded what the team had expected. To put these numbers in perspective, the total area of the lower half of the photographed slope in the first three transects was about 23,000 square meters. There were 50 king crab in those 23,000 square meters, which is an average of one king crab for every 460 square meters. That doesn't seem like much until you realize the total area of the deeper half of the Marguerite Bay slope is about 300 million square meters. At an average of one king crab per 460 square meters, that means an invasion force of well over half a million king crabs could be poised to move up the slope and over the top onto the Marguerite Bay shelf. The team needed to know whether the number of king crabs on the first three transects represented their abundance along the rest of the slope. Working in shifts, they did five dives with sea sled over the next four days on different parts of the slope and shelf. Their findings from those five dives were even more alarming. Not only was the density of king crabs on the lower part of the slope even greater than in the first three transects, the team spotted king crabs on the upper part of the slope for the first time, only a few hundred meters from the shelf break. The king crab invasion of the Antarctic shelf was not just a distant hypothetical. It was already starting to happen. Are we on camera? Not yet. It's not going to make us look fat, is it? Don't worry. You'll look fine. Are people going to think it's strange that we're talking without moving our lips? No. Everyone knows penguins communicate telepathically. Now, get ready and action. Hi, my name is Skyla, and this is my friend Zoe. We're penguins! Of course we're penguins. Everyone can see that. Anyway, the director asked us to tell you what we think about the king crabs that are about to invade the Antarctic shelf. We're scared! Of course we're scared. If the king crabs start attacking and eating the clams, snails, and brittle stars that live on the shelf, they'll disrupt the whole Antarctic ecosystem. We'll starve! Well, let's just say that big changes to the food chains usually come along with nasty surprises. But it's not just about us. Scientists have discovered that the unique plants and animals that live on the Antarctic shelf make chemicals that could fight cancer and other diseases. Those new medicines could be lost if the king crabs make it onto the shelf. Hey guys, come quick! Harry found a swarm of krill on the north side of the floe, and a bunch of us are hurrying over there to feed. I love krill! Come on, Skyla, let's go! You guys go ahead. I'll be there in a minute. The scientists tell me that the water is getting warmer because of climate change. If there is anything you can do that would keep the king crabs away, we would really appreciate it. Skyla, come on! Okay, I better go feed while I still can. Coming, Zoe!